Welcome to part two of the straight line engine build. In part one, I went over some of the parts that I've accumulated so far. Uh, some of them are repurposed parts from uh, milling machines, lathes, uh, some brand new parts like the uh, compound table, uh, micrometer and stuff like that. Uh, in part two, we're gonna get into a little bit of machining, uh, some fabricating of some parts that uh, need to be made in order to build the straight line engine. So here I have two pieces of cast iron. So these were cut off of a three foot long bar. Uh, they're a little over an inch, I think inch uh, 200 thou, so just shy of inch and a quarter. Uh, and then about three and a half inches wide. These two pieces of cast iron will uh, have matching dovetails machined to them. So one of them will be female dovetail with a gib and the other side will be the male dovetail. The male dovetail side is going to be mounted onto the head of the column for the milling machine. Uh, a recess will be bored into the center and it will slip over this boss. I'm going to shave down probably another 200 thousandths off of uh, this boss just to get a little bit uh, slimmer profile on here. So it'll center on this boss here uh, and then I'm going to build some provisions into the dovetail where I will have captive nuts that come through the back of the head of the milling column, uh, which will be on either side of the center boss. So the male side of the dovetail, the bottom part, will be able to rotate but stay centered. Uh, this will allow me to tram the dovetails and the slide mechanism in line. Uh, perpendicular to the straight line pattern bars. Uh, if you're off a little bit, it changes your amplitude and it can also mess up your cut. Uh, so it needs to be trammed perfectly perpendicular with the straight line pattern bars. Uh, but once I get it all trammed in, I'm able to lock that down into position. Uh, the top part of the dovetail, which will be the female side, like I mentioned, will have a gib that I will machine out of either cast iron or bronze. Um, the dovetails aren't really load bearing. It's just for linear motion. Uh, there's going to be a spring mechanism between the two dovetails uh, that pulls the top, the female dovetail part forward uh, towards the straight line pattern bars. So that's what's going to uh, provide my pressure against the straight line pattern bars so that it oscillates in line uh, with whatever pattern it's replicating. So we're going to jump into some machining. I picked up uh, this little dovetail cutter from Shars. It's a fairly small dovetail cutter, but it is... Um, does have two indexable cutters mounted on it. It's a 3 8 shank, three quarter total cutting width. Uh, the dovetail is only going to be about 300 thousandths of an inch deep. Like I mentioned, it's not load bearing, it's just to support the linear motion. Uh, so it doesn't need to be incredibly strong or robust. These blocks are also gonna get machined down just to the thickness that I need so that I don't have a bunch of excess weight on my uh, column head. So what I'll do is for the female side of the dovetail, I'm gonna start there. Uh, I'm gonna mill a channel out of the center, uh, determine the width that I, I want the dovetails to be. So uh, the wider, the better in this instance. Uh, so I'll mill out a channel that's the width of the top of the dovetail. Uh, and then I'll switch over to my dovetail cutter and the channel already be 300 thousandths of an inch deep. So I'll touch off my cutter at 300 thousandths deep, and then I'll just do multiple passes, stepping out from the center on either side until I have the dovetail, the female side of the dovetail that I'm looking for. Both sides are, are equal. And then I'll swap over to the male side of the dovetail and similar, but uh, practically opposite. So I'll machine off the two sides and just leave the center portion as the widest point of the dovetail. Then I'll bring my dovetail cutter in, touch off at 300 thousandths deep, and then the same operation, just run my dovetail cutter back and forth along the sides. I will need to machine one side a little bit uh, smaller, so I need to account for the width of my gib, which will probably be maybe 200 thousandths uh, or a quarter inch wide, so I'll account for that when I'm machining the male side of the dovetail, so it'll be a little bit off center, but the gib will make up for that. So I'm gonna get one of these pieces chucked up into the milling machine vise uh, and start some machining.
right, so here we are. It's about a week later. Uh, I've been super busy with my day job. I haven't been able to spend too much time in the shop this past week with uh, all the things going on in the world right now. Uh, there were a couple operations that I did off camera. I machined the Gib out of aluminum bronze uh, 954. This is probably one of my favorite materials to work with now. It, uh, it machines so well, uh, but it maintains a nice abrasion resistance and uh, its own lubricity um, that's really built into the material. And all it is is copper, uh, predominantly copper, some aluminum and some iron. Uh, and it's very corrosion resistant, uh, great material. I actually picked some up to make some watch cases and crowns out of. So I'm gonna be doing a very small run of bronze watches after I finish my first production run of watches. As you can see, I have the dovetails cut, both male and female sides. I made the gib and then I also uh, drilled and tapped some gib set screw uh, that have little locking nuts here so I can adjust the tension on the gibs. Uh, really, it was machined with such uh, tight tolerances that the screws don't actually need to apply any pressure. Really, they're just in there to hold the gib in place so that it doesn't slide out when the uh, male side of the dovetail is moving in and out. Um, really great motion. It moves really easily, um, but has no play at all. And if it does develop any play as the gib and the uh, cast iron wear in, I can always adjust that with the set screws there. Uh, little brass plugs that are in the bottom of the screws that are pushing into the gib. So it's not gonna mar the gib at all and put too much pressure on the gib. So really happy with how that came out. My first time ever machining dovetails. Um, what I probably will do though, is on the male side of the dovetail, I'm probably gonna mill a channel out of the center. There's a little bit too much surface contact and I wanna bring that down a little bit and it'll bring the friction down, although it isn't hard to move. Uh, I don't wanna to have to have a ton of spring pressure pushing against the, the pattern bars. So I'll probably machine a little channel out and reduce the, uh, the amount of friction. Uh, and I might also take a carbide burr and put some oil retaining passages on the ways but overall really happy with how it came out so this part uh, will receive a couple more machining operations i'm going to thin the profile down just a little bit um, the male side of the dovetail is probably going to be the stationary part that's on the head here so i'm going to uh, drill a hole all the way through uh, and then i'm going to use my boring head and bore out the hole to the exact diameter here and then also drill two holes, countersink them on the other side for my captive nuts. So I can tram the dovetails in line with the pattern bars. I'm also going to need to drill and tap some attachment points for the spring mechanism that pulls the dovetail forward onto the pattern bars, as well as figure out how I'm gonna set up the stop on the other side. I also went ahead and machined some material off of this centering boss here, um, just so I could reduce the overall height of my uh, fixed dovetail side. So the pen chuck casting from David showed up this week as well. The castings look really great. No inclusions, uh, super high quality castings. They're rough. So the uh, pen chuck is going to require quite a bit of machining. Uh, it's just three parts uh, and then some additional accessories and stuff that will attach to the main casting parts. So the main body here needs to be milled flat. So I'll use my uh, face mill, mill that flat. Um, some machining operations on the back as well. I need to figure out exactly how I'm going to attach uh, before I do any machining, figure out how I'm gonna attach this uh, to the dovetail slide. Uh, so I'll have to do a little bit of thinking, figure out how I do that and maybe do some research, see how Plant did it on their original machines. Uh, and then I think the original pen chuck just had channels cut out in the center. And then each of these um, ends also had matching channels. So they would slide in the channels. Uh, and then I think there was a, um, a bolt or a nut that locked it from the backside so that you can adjust the total uh, length of the part that you are uh, engraving. So the bottom part really just holds a center. And then the top part has uh, the work holding. So it could be a chuck or it could be a center if, you're, if you just wanna have the part turning between centers there. Uh, and then an indexing piece. So I think the original part had a uh, ratchet and pawl system. And so you would machine your own uh, ratchet wheels with the number of teeth that correspond with the number of indexes that your part would have uh, during a full rotation. So quite a bit of machining to do on these pieces, but really great starting point, uh, something that's tried and true. So I'm excited to get this machined and put together as well. So 
in the upcoming episodes, I'm going to be completing the dovetail slide mechanism, figuring out how I'm going to use the spring to apply the, the pressure, as well as getting it mounted to the headstock. So once I have that mounted to the headstock, I can really put some thought into how I'm gonna develop my work holding system. I'll also need to figure out how to machine the worm wheel and the uh, drive screw for that and how to mount it on to the work holding piece. So yeah, quite a few uh, steps to come, but happy with the progress so far. Really happy with my first time ever machining dovetails. Uh, so excited with how that came out. Thanks for checking out part two of my straight line engine build. Uh, there's gonna be a couple more parts coming in the series as I'm getting closer to uh, completion of the machine. Really excited to have it uh, completed. So it's kind of taking priority over some other stuff in the workshop, uh, but I'm excited to have it together uh, and get it running. So thanks for tuning in to part two of the straight line engine build. Still quite a few more steps to go to get the machine really resembling an actual straight line engine, uh, but pieces are definitely coming together. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, keep an eye out for the next couple of episodes where the machine is really gonna start taking shape and looking like the machine that it is intended to be. Um, if you have any questions, comments, feel free to drop them down below. I'm happy to uh, engage with anybody who has questions or is thinking about building their own machine. Uh, feel free to reach out and ask any questions. I appreciate it. Thank you.